Lonely Monk Productions. Yo, That's My John is brought to you by Anchor.fm. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Take a seat. Let me explain. It's free. It costs nothing. Zero dollars and zero cents. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Me? I'm doing this from my iPad. It's that simple. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more podcast providers. What's that mean? That means when someone says, hey, how do I find your podcast? You go, "Uh, you ever hear of a little app called Spotify? Boom, it's there. What's that in your hand, an iPhone? Boom, go to your podcast app. I'm there. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Right from the beginning, straight out the gate, you can make money. Season one made me so much money, I could afford a cup of coffee at Starbucks. A grande. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's anchor.fm. I don't know if y'all have heard the song Only for Tonight by Pearl Charles, but yo. That's my joy. That's my joy. Hey, yo, displace the What is good, friends and family, neighbors, near and far? Welcome to the Yo, That's My John podcast, a podcast so short we don't even use all of the letters. I am your host, Nate Runkle, a.k.a. Nate 3.0, and I hope this podcast finds you in good health and in good spirits. If you have not already, make sure you check out episode three of the pod with my interview with John Fay. It was, dare I say it myself, awesome. And we've been doing some more with the YouTube channel. (laughs) We, he says, like it isn't just a one-person operation. Uh, We've been doing more with the YouTube channel. We got covers, we got throwbacks, and uh, yada, yada, yada. You know, like in my interview with John Fay, I told the story of how I was in a singing duo 10 or so years ago. Well, I just found our only recorded performance from Fergie's Pub, and that's going to go up on the channel tomorrow. Be sure to check that out. Also, if you have Spotify, starting this Friday, we are going to start dropping a bi-weekly Spotify exclusive called Weekend Jams. They are playlists in podcast form curated by me. So make sure you follow us over there. So it's kind of my birthday. Okay, well, May 2nd was my birthday. And by the time you are watching this and or hearing it, that will have passed. But look, it's my party and I'll pod if I want to. Okay. And I completely understand how self-centered and egotistical it is to celebrate your own day of birth, but fuck it. Bathe in the cleverness of me. All right. What I wanted to do, look, I, I, it took me some time to figure out what I wanted to do on the podcast to celebrate my birthday. And what I realized was I have never taken the jauntlet myself. I ask guests this every single episode, and I have never said what my one hit wonders are and what my uh, top 10 countdown is. So I'm sure you're sitting at home. Nate, what's your John? What's your favorite John? Tell us your John. And that's what I'm going to do. But I'm sitting there thinking about it. And had I just like told you the answers that I have for these questions or whatnot, or had I just, you know, uh, uh, read them off a piece of paper or something stupid like that, it would have been very dull and unentertaining. Okay. So what I decided to do is I reached out to a good friend of mine, an old friend of mine who I haven't spoken to in quite some time. And I asked him if he would mind interviewing me for my birthday podcast. And he said, yes. So I would like to introduce you guys to Petey. But before I do, I should probably let you know that Petey is what we refer to as a hand-assisted American, uh, more affectionately known as a Muppet. Petey's a Muppet. Okay, Petey's my Muppet. And um, so I'm about to be interviewed uh, for the jauntlet by a Muppet. So I hope you enjoy it. But with that being said, and without further ado, take it away, Petey. Thanks, Nate. And hi, everybody. And welcome to the Yo, That's My Joint Podcast. And I'm Petey. And this is Petey. And thank you. Petey, buddy, slow down. You're going to do great. Okay. Just take a breath and mm-hmm, start mm-hmm, over. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. 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 <sighs> okay. <sighs> 
Hi, friends and family, and welcome to the Yo, That's My Joint podcast. I'm Petey. What's your name? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. My guest today is Nate. Hi, Nate. Hey, Petey. Okay, 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 okay. Nate, are you ready to take the joint? Absolutely. Fire away, buddy. Okay, 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 okay. We are going to start with um, One Hit Wonders. Here we go. Who do you like better, Sammy Hagar or David Lee Roth? Look, I'm going to give the answer that I'm pretty sure almost every other guest has given. It's David Lee Roth, all right? And that's not anything against Sammy Hagar. I like Sammy Hagar. I've come around to Sammy Hagar. He's a part of a lot of really good Van Halen songs. But look, Diamond Dave is the answer. Mm, uh, me too, me too, me too. Yeah, Petey, I, uh, I kind of feel like uh, for some reason our answers are going to be the same. Hmm, we'll see. Okay, uh, Notorious B.I.G. or Mr. Tupac Shakur? Uh, for me, uh, it's Biggie all day, every day. You know, uh, I like Tupac as an actor, as a uh, activist, as a personality, uh, but as a rapper, um, nothing compares to the notorious B.I.G. Number three, who do you like better, Nirvana or Pearl Jam? For me, it's Pearl Jam. Uh, it'll always be Pearl Jam, and that's no disrespect to Nirvana, um, but I do think they are somewhat somewhat don't hate me music fans but i do think nirvana scotch overrated scotch overrated but i love bleach great album uh but for me the answer is pearl jam okay 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 um beatles or the rolling stones Okay, so this is the big one, right? This is the big one that everybody always asks, and um, which is obviously why I put it in here. Um, but for me, um, and again, for the people in the back who've been listening to this show since episode one, you've probably heard me say this probably around 10 times now, uh, but the Rolling Stones um, is my pick. The Rolling Stones, to me, are a better band. They're just a great band, whereas the Beatles, say it with me, three geniuses and Ringo, blah, 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 blah. But no, for me, the Rolling Stones are phenomenal and their output, their music, any, any, any mood I'm in, there's a Stones song for me. Uh, so uh, Rolling Stones. Um, yeah, sorry, that is wrong. Okay, uh, who is your favorite Beatle? Okay, for me, the answer is quite simple. Uh, my favorite Beatle is George Harrison. Uh, he had uh, my favorite songs. Uh, he had my favorite solo career. And uh, I mean, even Frank Sinatra recognized that he called something the most beautiful song in the last hundred years. Uh, so the answer, George Harrison. Good answer. Good answer. Okay. 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 A uh, one last one hit wonder. Who do you like better? Prince or Michael Jackson? All right. People who know me know this is a really, really difficult decision. This is like uh, Sophie's choice or whatnot. Um, as a kid, I was an enormous Michael Jackson fan and not just a little kid um, when I used to rock the beat it jacket with the zippers and stuff like that. But even more so into um, high school, I was still dressing like Michael Jackson way after it was cool. Um, like around the time of the first allegations, I, I had the ponytail and I was dressing like I was in the uh, the way you make me feel video. Um I was a big Michael Jackson fan. Um, but uh, as I got older, I started to learn how much Prince created and how much he did himself. Uh, and not just that, but um, the man had funk, man. He was funky as hell. And uh, I got to say, uh, I got to say my answer is Prince. Sorry, Mike. Okay, 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 okay. You have made it to the next round. This section we call the Top Ten Countdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I know the name. I, uh, I created this. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, buddy. Continue. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. A uh, top ten countdown number one. Um, remember, Nate. Um, I am the host, so I am the host. I run this. Look at me. You look at me. I am the host now. I am the host. Top ten countdown number one. What was your first John? All right. So this is weird for me because uh, I always had this answer in my mind that um, 
Robert Palmer's Bad Case of Loving You, the uh, Dr. Doctor song, uh, was my first John. But uh, you know, doing this right now, sitting here talking to you, I'm starting to realize that actually my, my, my first John is, is probably Sesame Street. Like I was raised on Sesame Street. It was such an integral part of my childhood and I was obsessed with it. I had books, dolls, toys, everything. Um, but beyond that, like uh, I thought those characters were my friends. I, I met Gordon at the Montgomeryville Mall um, when I was a little kid. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to put this picture up as well. Um, and I was just, I was in awe that I was standing in front of the man who I watched on TV every day. Um, and uh, so, you know, that was probably my first John. And if you want to make it about music, then my first John was either the pinball countdown, the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, or um, beat, beat, sugar, beat, sugar, beat. Um, that was one, or uh, milk 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 so uh those were probably my uh that was uh that was those were my uh that was my john um nate uh come here come here come here come here come here come here um why do i make you think of sesame street mm. next question oh okay 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 and uh, number two what is your current john Okay, my, my current John, um, I, I said it at the top of the podcast, um, but my current John is uh, Only For Tonight by Pearl Charles. Um, uh, the first time I heard that song, I thought, oh, here's a pretty killer 70s song that I must have missed out on. How, how would I have missed this? But um, it's awesome. I heard it on uh, 88.5 WXPN, and, and I was like, oh, this is great. And you know, then I looked it up, and I was like, oh, uh, this came out two months ago. That makes zero sense. Um, and ever since then, I've been absolutely obsessed, not just with that, but also with the album. Uh, so my current John is, uh, only for tonight by Pearl Charles. That's good. That's a good song. That's a good song. Okay. 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 Uh, what is your, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 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 What was your first concert? First concert was uh, David Bowie on the Sirius Moonlight Tour, uh, 1983 at Hershey Park, um, which is cool. Um, but my second concert was David Bowie at the Vet Stadium for the Glass Spider Tour. Um, so yeah, my first two uh, my first two concerts uh, were David Bowie. That is so cool. Okay, 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 okay. What was your last concert? Um, my uh, last concert was Mondo Cosmo at uh, the Ardmore Music Hall. Um, and it was the night that everything got locked down. Um, so like we went to the show and then at midnight, everything was locked down. And then of course, as, uh, you're all familiar, the world changed and, uh, it was crazy. But, um, the awesome thing is that next Friday, May 7th, I am going to my first concert in a year. Uh, we're going to see G love at the Ardmore music hall. So it's like bookending the pandemic with, uh, the shutdown and hopefully the reopening of the world. So, um, so Mondo Cosmo at uh, the Ardmore Music Hall was my last concert. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, number five, what was your favorite concert? Favorite concert. This is a tough one. I mean, there's so many to choose from, so many great memories. I mean, 94 counterparts, uh, Rush at... Um the spectrum we were like three rows back that was like a, a pivotal moment in my childhood um pearl jam the second to last night uh before uh the end of the spectrum that was an unbelievable show that i will never forget but for me my favorite concert um was going to see beck at the exponential music festival with katie it was like our our first like um real date is what we use as our um anniversary and um it rained and we had lawn seats and we were just dancing in the rain on the lawn um to so many fantastic songs and it is without a doubt um my favorite concert memory my favorite concert and uh probably one of my favorite moments in life and um yeah it was awesome oh you love her okay, okay. <laughs> love 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 okay 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 uh who have you never seen live that you wish you would have 
Uh, who have I never seen that I wish I would have? Well, it's uh, Prince. And um, I think I mentioned this uh, on the last podcast, but I had a chance to see Prince when I was a kid. It would have been my second concert instead of Bowie. Um, it would have been in between the Bowie shows. It was the Purple Rain tour. And my parents did buy a ticket and they were going to take me until they found out um, what a Prince stage show looked like in the 80s. And um, they gave my ticket to one of their friends. So I did not get to see Prince ever and that's a, a enormous regret of mine so uh the answer to that for me is prince number seven can you name an unappreciated john unappreciated john uh this one's easy i'm wearing it on my shirt guys it's dream a little dream with Corey feldman and Corey haim jason robards and piper laurie and meredith salinger it's uh uh without a doubt one of my favorite movies of all time if not my number one favorite movie of all time it just holds a special place in my heart um and i love it and it's totally unappreciated and it kind of got uh wrapped up in all of those body switch movies of the 80s but it's something special and it's something different and uh that is my unappreciated john dream a little dream Corey feldman Corey haim mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um what is your um number eight um what is your favorite album favorite album um i told ben arnold this on the podcast but my favorite album is pinkerton by weezer um it is track by track uh just amazing every single song on there uh is a banger and um it just it, it takes me back it holds such a special place in my heart so uh favorite album pinkerton by weezer <clears throat> a number nine serious announcer five who is an artist who you will consume anything they put out, even though, and this is mean, you may have to apologize for it. Um, artists I will consume anything they put out and I've never had to apologize for is Wilco. I love Wilco. Um, I love Jeff Tweedy. I love every single side project, uh, Nels Klein, Autumn Defense, all of that. Um, I'll eat it all up. Um, and uh, yeah. That's my answer. <laughs> Wilco. Okay, 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 okay. And here we go with the number 10. Top 10 question. Are you ready? All right, buddy. Let's do it. What is your favorite John of all time? Well, for me, uh, this one is simple. Uh, my favorite John of all time is Star Wars. And I know a lot of you out there know me personally, and this should not come as a surprise. But Star Wars, my favorite John of all time. Star Wars came out in 1977. I was born 1977. My entire life has been Star Wars, and we have had a relationship like this. Um, I cosplay Star Wars characters. I have got Star Wars toys, Star Wars posters, Star Wars everything pretty much uh at any point in time i can find something star wars on my person or nearby uh let's put that to a test um this isn't a prop this isn't um oh here we go look at this right here uh two feet from me is uh my uh my my yoda puppet um uh, my little yoda puppet um yeah star wars is my favorite john of all time and that's it and that's the top 10 countdown Petey, you were really good at this. You did a great job. Thank you for interviewing me. You are welcome, birthday boy. You know, maybe we'll have to have you come back and do this some more. Just maybe? Give it up for Petey, everybody. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Well, that's it for this episode of the podcast. My thanks again to Petey for helping out on the hosting duties today. You can find the video of our chat right now on our YouTube channel. I mean, it's me and a Muppet. I don't have to tell you. Run! Run there now! And join us next week for a proper episode of the Yo, That's My John podcast. We have some really crazy guests coming up in the next few weeks, and I am crazy excited to share these interviews with you. Make sure you check out the social media accounts at Yo, That's My John and find us on YouTube. Like I said, at the top of the show, we're going to get back to pumping out video content, so be sure to search for Yo, That's My John and like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again for spending my birthday with me, guys. Until next time, everybody. Hey, yo, displace the guilt and embrace the pleasure. You taste in music.
doesn't have to be measured. You ain't being judged. Yo, That's My John is a Lonely Monk production written and produced by yours truly, Nate Runkle. Theme song by Phil Tyler Music featuring Nate 3.0. Special thanks to Fox Run Brands, DX Ferris, Andrew Scott, Natalie Runkle, and the incredibly brilliant and wickedly stunning Katie Daubney. If you or anyone you know has any ideas they would like to share or any guests they would like to hear on the podcast, please feel free to reach out to us at yo that's my john at gmail.com. Or you can leave an audio message for us and possibly hear yourself on a future episode by visiting anchor.fm slash ytmj slash message. Until next time, be sure to displace the guilt and embrace the pleasure and shout to the world, yo, that's my John. Yo, that's my John.